the forehead of your robot. Let me tell you this. Do you know what Lost Media is? No, I'm asking those to the people who is new to this kind of subject. Lost Media is media that doesn't exist anymore, or something that is no longer available to the public. This includes TV shows, movies, videos, music, books, games, and much more. However I've heard countless stories of people experiencing certain lost media. And I do in fact have a lost media experience as well. One time I used to watch a lost version of Ratatouille, that depicted two scenes I only remember before I found it. One scene was that of Emily getting killed by being struck by lightning, and a scene of a bird's eye view of a deceased person at a kitchen, due to the fact that somebody accidentally puts poison in his food. I like to call a first person view a bird's eye view because why not? In the view, people are fighting with the sounds of underwater, and the vision was blurry. The words, no heaven, no hell, appears on the screen. Note, I was at school that time, and what I saw just disturbs me. I get the fact that it was a movie, but something wasn't right about it. I have in fact found the movie, I was on a hunt for it for a while now. I just regret watching for a reason. It just feels too horrible to even take a look at it. Why would I see Emily die from getting hit by lightning? Why would I see a bird's eye of a deceased person? It doesn't feel too right. I remember watching many traumatic films and shows too, such as Elf and Lied, an anime not for kids. Basically I did find the movie, but I absolutely regret watching it. It's too realistic for a cartoony fashioned film. No heaven, no hell, being put onto the screen just makes me uncomfortable. I've seen experiences from people watching dark and disturbing lost episodes, that contain disturbing and horrific scenes of violence and much more. But before I mention the origin of lost episodes, let me tell you a few experiences from some users online. The first user was a male, who lives in Chicago, and had an experience of a lost episode of the TV show, Care Bears. This lost episode focused on some of the Care Bears going to defeat No Heart. This lost episode started to get dark, when No Heart transformed into a lion and devoured one of the Care Bears to death. Of course no blood, but he was screaming in absolute pain. The user doesn't remember who that Care Bear was. Some users actually have seen this episode before. Some of them were traumatized from viewing this specific lost episode from the Care Bears series. The Care Bears show has other darker lost episodes as well. But my experience was only viewed by few. Not a lot of people have seen the lost Ratatouille film. Someone has the similar experience with me, and apparently before the hunt finished, he said that he has in fact seen this alternative version of Ratatouille, that was never supposed to air at all. This alternative version of Ratatouille, was something Pixar shouldn't be ever allowed in their films. And like I said, I'll explain later. The next user shared his experience with the lost episode of Scooby-Doo, where Shaggy and the gang investigate a haunted hotel with some creepy paintings inside. While the investigation was still going, Shaggy sees something odd. Apparently there was an arm reaching out from the painting, and grabbing Shaggy straight in, trapping him for the rest of his own life, right in that painting. The episode ended there. So basically why do people make these episodes and films into dark lost versions of themselves? I need to find out, and I need to debunk if some of the user's experiences with lost episodes are real or fake. From the following, who have been saying they've encountered these lost episodes. Yet I have the lost Ratatouille film, however I need to go on a scavenger for lost episodes to see if they are real, and why the creators made these lost episodes to begin with. Such as some users saying they have seen a lost episode of the Three Stooges, where Curly ate his hand off in that episode. They have been saying he was hungry, and wanted to eat himself in that very specific episode of the Three Stooges. And then there was this episode of King of the Hill, where Hank actually gets injured, while getting into a car crash while being drunk. So basically I need to go somewhere, where there's pretty much an explanation on why lost episodes exist in the first place. So therefore I went to California to ask Disney about this Ratatouille film. Okay, apparently today I've learned about this Ratatouille film. Disney told me about the actual origins of lost episodes, and why they exist. 
they followed us to some sort of vault containing episodes, films, games, music, advertisements, books, and audio recordings that have been lost to this day. But why are they kept locked in shelves inside a vault? It's confirmed that any company has this kind of lost media marketed for themselves, and the production teams surrounding the show or film. Apparently they made separate private adult episodes for themselves to view and not released on air. These types of media include dark humor, disturbing elements, drugs and much more. Why do these people, who created such shows like Spongebob Squarepants, The Simpsons or something like that, to include adult themes or supposed dark humor to be added to their own sakes? Each director or production team aren't too interested in the show at times, and create episodes for themselves to enjoy that includes disturbing elements or supposed dark humor into them. Some of the production team members have different tastes of humor. Whether it's got to be strange or edgy, the creators will always follow their advice for themselves to enjoy. Some of this dates back to the 1920s or the 1930s, with the fact that you weren't allowed to put adult-related themes, such as cursing, or violent deaths in the films. Something you weren't allowed to put on film, until like in the 1960s or the 1970s. I asked some of the members if they found an anime series similar to Elf and Lied. They said that there is a lost scene where Lucy gets a strange nightmare, and their company isn't for companies who made Elf and Lied. I know that scene before, but I'm not interested to it, and I found a Ratatouille film three years ago. But the members did show us some lost episodes of cartoons. They showed us the first lost episode, which is an episode of The Muppets Show, where Kermit is actually seen with a coat, and walks to a bar. He drinks beer in this lost episode, and talks to Gonzo about sex. The scene continues on, until Kermit gets his face deformed into something unusual and really strange. It's probably because of him drinking too much, but he wasn't drunk. His face looked to be different and some of it was rotting away. The episode then ended there. I told them about a lost Mickey Mouse short, about Mickey dying from tear gas on accident. He didn't have a gas mask on whatsoever, so he unfortunately dies from gas. The scene cuts to vultures feeding on his body, and it's nothing but bones. I told them about where I would go to find that Scooby-Doo lost episode, however I needed to go to Warner Brothers, that's surprisingly close to the Disney production headquarters. But before that, I saw that one Ratatouille film, that I regretted to watch since three years ago. But I have somebody with me to watch this film. But I couldn't, I asked him about it, and lead me to a room. Oh god, why was I there? My eyes are shrunken, my teeth are chattering, while my body is quaking to the fact I had to watch a film I regretted for three years. When the film began, my heart began to race for this film. Emily dies, and at the end was a bird's eye view of a deceased person. That same fucking person, who died with the words, no heaven, no hell, plastered on the screen, while three people are arguing over the body. It indicates death, and that's why I absolutely regret watching this Ratatouille movie for three years. I got out and drove to Warner Brothers to find these different lost episodes of specific shows. It was a few towns away but I luckily made it. When I arrived, I met some of the people there, and it wasn't too bad. But they did have a vault that contains lost episodes. Surprisingly, they managed to get a few lost episodes and films from companies as well. The reason why they were there, is because the companies sometimes trade different and separate episodes from different shows, to keep for themselves to enjoy. Our next one was a lost episode of The Amazing World of Gumball, a show that was silly and pretty quirky if you ask me. But that's what I'm not talking about, this episode was titled, Gumball's Soul. In this lost episode, it started with Gumball talking to Darwin about meeting with a person who they had never met before. They grabbed their stuff and met this random person. This person was written in a cartoon style as usual. But here's something that gets dark. He shows his hand and takes Gumball's soul to hell. It wasn't too messed up, but why would Gumball ever take his soul to hell? That's strange and unnerving if you ask me. The next one is a lost version of the movie Beetlejuice. This movie shows one of the characters throwing up, on what appears to be a baby mixed with some sort of fish and a lizard. Okay, that was some very weird stuff in Beetlejuice. What is the point of throwing up on a weird looking baby in this version of the movie? Then we got some music album, 
of what appears to be a lost song, sung by the Red Army Choir. I played the song, and it actually contains lyrics about the gulags in the Soviet Union, and how it affected many people. One part of the lyrics was the Berlin Wall, and how a boy died on his birthday after trying to get a ball across the wall. Pretty heavy stuff, eh? The last item on the list was a lost episode of Looney Tunes. The episode was called, Bugs Bunny's Injury. The episode began with Bugs messing with Elmer Fudd. It seems like your normal Looney Tunes episode, but all of a sudden, a bottle gets flung right towards Bugs Bunny's arm. He gets multiple cuts on his arm, and for some reason, he puts something that looks like lemonade onto his arm, and screams in pain and agony. The reason for that is really unknown, but it's pretty painful and gruesome if you ask me. I can't get that fucking image out of my head. What was the point of Disney making a realistic portrayal of life in Ratatouille? The fact they had a part, where there's literally a first person, bird's eye, view of a corpse with the words, no heaven, no hell, plastered to it. Disney is a happy company, not some truth teller. Now it just unnerved me thinking about death after that film. I always feel like I'm gonna get killed for some reason, it doesn't feel safe. What is the point of a film so beloved by many, to have an altered version of itself including a first person, bird's eye, view of a corpse? Why do they have to add in the words no heaven, no hell in? And why are there other experiences of other dark lost episodes? But anyway, I actually found what appears to be a lost cassette tape, of what appears to be an interview of something lost. I put the cassette tape into the player, and played the audio recording of what appears to be an interview. The interview played like this. A production team member is getting interviewed by another person for a lost episode. The tape went like this. So, explain to us about hidden material in the entertainment industry? Yeah, that's for ourselves and we make them private. Please ask permission to see them first. Okay, can we see them? Okay, here is one of them, a lost episode of the Twilight Zone. I warn you, it contains graphic scenes. When he puts this whatever thing in, the episode sounds like it was about a man, who was living in some house, where he finds some aliens by his yard. He greeted them and they greeted him. However things go dark. In the audio, I hear the sounds of bone crunching and screaming from the man, along with what sounds like a cruel experiment on him, so he can become an alien. The episode ended there. The interview continues on with this. So what was the point of making separate private episodes and films, while your job was supposed to make these films and TV shows for showing others? Here's the thing. It's the fact that there are some weird members of whatever crew there is. Especially from companies such as Warner Brothers, Disney or something like that. Some people have some weird sense of humor. It's nothing too special. Why were these films made? Because the director can achieve any private idea they want for themselves. They can allow dark humor, violence and maybe even some realistic elements to that as well. I was about to get off from that recording, until I heard the word, Ratatouille. One staff team member wanted a much more realistic way of some sort of film. However he needed to work at Pixar still, and asked the director advice for some realistic effects on the characters. It's nothing humor related. So he thinks that this lost version of Ratatouille should have realistic portrayals? Yup. Exactly, why would the director make and follow something like this? It's like a movie production's free time. They have these vaults that contains lost episodes or versions of certain films, shows, music, games, advertisements, books, audio recordings and even paintings. They pretty much like to keep them as their own. You know how like certain kids shows or films are marketed towards kids? Yes. That's because some of the members aren't into them. They also wanted films and episodes marketed towards themselves. They keep these episodes and alternative versions of movies in vaults, and maybe even bring them home with them. I stopped listening to the lost interview between the truth behind lost episodes. That's how lost episodes are made, but the question is, why do they sometimes make them public to some viewers? Basically I was thinking of going to go ask some local team member on phone, or something like that for the fact that they sometimes appear to some people at different junctures. 
I just don't know why, so I decided to find some local phone number from somebody, who is a part of one of these companies running films and shows. So I grabbed a phone book to see if there's any person I can contact to. But before that, what I had in thought was the Care Bears Lost episode to debunk whether it's real or not. But I did ask one of the team members at Warner Brothers to deliver me a box set of DVDs of lost films and episodes. It featured films and shows such as Cats and Dogs, Space Jam, Animaniacs, Looney Tunes, and other films and shows that aren't a part of Warner Brothers, like Rocco's Modern Life, Beavis and Butthead, Good Burger, Beverly Hill Cops, and of course, Elf and Lied. When the box set was delivered, I got these films. But, there was a lost episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog that actually got into me. The episode was titled, Courage is Kidnapped, which just sounds plain awful enough. Courage the Cowardly Dog was my beloved childhood character. I was into it, but at the same time, I just don't want my childhood character to have a horrendous fate. I saw Courage as a loving character, that inspired me to watch Courage the Cowardly Dog, and I wasn't into watching it. Oh god, I'm absolutely traumatized now. After watching the Courage the Cowardly Dog episode, I think I will never see Courage the same way again. The episode started with Muriel and Eustace talking, until Courage goes outside. However he gets kidnapped and is tortured by a bunch of agency members. It is absolutely horrific, and the way he was kept as a slave, and was almost starved to death disturbs me. I won't go in full detail on it. It's just too horrific, it's nothing really sexual assault related, or something like that, but he was tortured in a graphic way that I can't explain. He was in a dark room with a bunch of men, and was absolutely tortured and kept as a slave for money. Luckily he survived from those horrors. I found a member, who works for Cartoon Network, on a phone book. His name was Brian, and I had to call him about these secrets behind these certain lost episodes. I tried calling him a couple of times, but he wouldn't answer. It took me a while when he began to call, and when he did, I asked him about these lost episodes being viewed by some people. He responds. Oh, how did people manage to get our lost episodes you may ask? I'm assuming there is some group of hackers putting our lost episodes in stores, some production members are actually parents, who brought their lost episodes to their houses. Sometimes kids would find these lost episodes of shows and alternative versions of films on accident, thinking that those were normal. And sometimes people like to pull stupid pranks on other people without getting caught. It's unfortunate, but it's true that those kinds of people are doing this. Now I can see why these episodes are getting found by specific people. But there is one thing I need to do, to find the lost episode of Care Bears, where no heart mauled one of the bears alive. Then there was another phone number, for somebody who worked at Pixar. So maybe I could know much more of the lost Ratatouille film, that featured realistic things that could happen in real life, such as Emily getting killed by lightning, or the view of a deceased person. Yet I'll say this again, I call first person viewing as bird's eye viewing. It's probably because I'm a kind of confusing person. I called this next person at Pixar about the film. I first said, so what's more to this than the film itself? Rather than the bird's eye view of a deceased person? He laughed and said. So who calls a first person angle a bird's eye view? But anyway, yes there is more to it. Apparently our members made an alternative version of this film, days after when the public Ratatouille film was made. However what I noticed was that Wummy sounded somewhat like Patton Oswald, but at the same time he really doesn't. I told him. Who voiced Wummy in the alternative version? He responds with Somebody else, who I think is named, Gary Shandling. He voiced Remy in this alternative version of Ratatouille. The call continued on. I said So why did you pick Shandling instead of Oswald? I knew he was gonna respond. I have no idea, but he just sounded like him. I asked him another question. Have you worked at Mill Creek Entertainment? He said I have before, are you looking for something? I responded. A Lost Care Bears episode, where no heart devoured one of the bears. He said. I don't know if that exists, I didn't know a vault containing lost media of any kind during that time, 
however I am aware there could be a lost episode of the Care Bears series with no heart in it. The call ended, so I asked another person about this Care Bears lost episode. One day however, I heard somebody chatting with another person in a hotel, containing the words, an episode of Care Bears I found. So I asked this person and told what the episode was about. So you want to see your childhood ruined? Okay, apparently no heart transformed into a wild animal, and devoured champ bear. I wanted to see it, and therefore they led me to their room. They have a DVD. Oh god, I'm pretty nervous to see Champ Bear getting horrifically devoured to pieces by no heart. It's not exciting, but I'm gonna watch it. When the episode began, my heart raced. It raced, and raced, when the episode continued, until it stopped when they get to no heart. He transformed into a lion, and mauled Champ Bear into shreds. He is screaming like bloody murder, and no heart mauled him for like minutes on. I stopped watching that episode, it wasn't good to see Champ Bear getting brutally mauled to death by no heart. It wasn't fun, the episode was real. It was real and it was horrific. After a few days later, I somewhat calmed down from the Ratatouille film, and the lost episodes of Courage the Cowardly Dog and Care Bears. Thanks to the people and thanks to that one audio recording, now you know why lost episodes exist. That's pretty much the end of the story, I don't have much more to say to you, than the fact that people kept lost versions of mainstream media for themselves.